Now, in this lecture, we will talk about the limit of a sequence. A sequence is a set of numbers, and uh, a sequence uh, can be finite, uh, like uh, this sequence that consists of only three terms, and a sequence uh, could be also infinite, like the set of the natural numbers that consist of infinite terms. In this lecture, we we'll talk only on sequences that are infinite. Let us say they consist of infinite terms. So the limit of a sequence is the value that the terms of a sequence tend to. Okay. So here lim is the relation for limit of sequence A N. Here n is the index of the theorem and a is the value of the theorem that its index is n. So the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity. So if the limit exists, that is to say, if the limit of sequence again when n tends to infinity is equal to the limit L, L belongs to the real numbers, then we we'll say that sequence AN is convergent. And uh, if a sequence has a limit, then it will have only one limit. That is to say, if a sequence has two limits, then it doesn't have a limit at all. So a sequence that doesn't converge, so if, for example, a sequence Bn doesn't have a limit, then it is defined as divergent sequence. Okay. Actually, the limit of a sequence is said to be the fundamental notion on which the whole of mathematical analysis ultimately rests. So, what is the definition of the limit of a sequence? A number L is the limit of sequence AN when N tends to infinity. If the numbers in the sequence become closer and closer to L. Okay? Only if the number of sequence again 
then it comes closer and closer to L, then we we'll say that the limit of sequence AN when N tends to infinity, it is equals to L, and as I already mentioned, L belongs to the real numbers, that is to say it could be any real number. So, that is the first way to write down the, the limit of sequence AN when N tends to infinity is equal to L. A second way to write down the same thing is AN if the right arrow is equal to L. So, those are the two methods to write down the, the limit of sequence AN when N tends to infinity is equal to L. So only if the following condition holds, we will say that the limit of sequence AN when N tends to infinity is equal to L. The condition that must hold is as follows. For yeah, write it down. The condition that must hold in order that the limit of sequence AN when n tends to infinity will be equal to L is as follows. For each real number epsilon that is greater than zero, that is to say for each real number epsilon that is a positive number, epsilon could be as small as we wish. There exists a natural number capital N such that for every natural number N that is greater than capital N, we will get that the absolute value of AN minus the limit N is less than epsilon. So only if this condition holds, then we can say that the limit of sequence AN when n tends to infinity is equal to L. Okay, I'll repeat again. The condition that must hold is for every uh, epsilon that is belongs to the real numbers and it is a positive number, there exists a natural number N, so for every natural there exists natural number capital N, so for every natural number N that is greater than capital N, we get that the absolute value of AN minus the limit L is less than epsilon. Okay. So what is the meaning of this condition? The meaning of this condition is that the terms of sequence AN are close to the limit L up to epsilon. So graphically we can draw here uh, if this if point L is the limit of sequence AN when N tends to infinity, then the environment of L starts from this point that is L minus epsilon and ends at this point that is L plus epsilon. Okay, so this is actually the environment of the limit L. The environment is not include the point L minus epsilon itself, but from L minus epsilon onwards 
until point L plus epsilon and the environment of L is not doesn't include the uh, point L plus epsilon itself. So the environment is from L minus epsilon until L plus epsilon. Okay. So according to the condition that must all from the index N on watch all uh, the terms of the sequence are actually close to the limit L up to epsilon and because of the fact that until uh, the index N we have fixed numbers of terms so here we have fixed numbers of terms of AN that don't uh, obey to this condition but from the index N onwards we have infinite terms of sequence AN that are close to the limit L up to epsilon that is to say in order that the limit of sequence again when n tends to infinity will be equal to l most of the terms of a n must be located inside the environment of l that is to say most of the terms of a n must be located between those two markets okay So, symbolically, we can write down the condition that must all as follows. For every epsilon that belongs to the real numbers and it is greater than zero, there exists, this is the sign of exist. capital N that belongs to the natural numbers and for every natural number N that is greater than capital N we will get that the absolute value of a n minus the limit l is less than epsilon. Okay, so this is the condition that must hold in order that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity will be equal to l. So sequence a n that converge to L is defined as convergent sequence and L must be its only limit. Otherwise, if sequence A and has more than uh, one limit, then it is defined as divergent. It doesn't conver converge at all. In the next step, I will present to you an example of a sequence. We have sequence AN that is equal to 1 over N. And we will prove that the limit of sequence AN that is equal to 1 over N when n tends to infinity is equal to zero. Okay.
So what are the terms of sequence an? An equals to one over n. When the index n equals to one, then the first term a1 of this sequence will be equal to one over one. When the index n equals to two, then a2 equals to 1 over 2, that is 1 half. When the index n equals to 3, then the third term of sequence a n, that is to say a3, it is equals to 1 third, etc., etc. When the index n of sequence a n equals to 1 over n is equals to 100, then the value of the term a 100 is equals to 1 over 100. Finally, when the index n equals to n, then a n equals to 1 over n. So here it is very easy to see here that when the index n increases, the terms of sequence a n equals to 1 over n are getting closer and closer to 0. From 1, the second term is 1 half, the third term is 1 third, the other term is 0 0.01. So, when n increases, the terms of sequence a n equals to 1 over n are getting closer and closer to 0. So we will assume that the limit of sequence a n equals to 1 over n when n tends to infinity is equal to 0. So in order to prove that the limit of is 0, we will have to prove that the condition that must hold in order that the limit of sequence a n equals to 1 over n when n tends to infinity will be equal to zero, the condition that must hold indeed holds. So the condition that must hold is as follows. Let epsilon be greater than zero and capital N then capital N B belongs to the natural numbers. So for capital N that is big enough, we get that for that any for any natural number N that is greater than capital N, uh, we must get that the absolute value of 1 over n minus the limit 0 is less than epsilon. So that is the condition that must hold in order that the limit of this sequence will be equal to 0. Okay? But what is the value of the absolute value of 1 over n minus 0? Because of the fact that when we subtract zero, it doesn't change anything, can cancel out zeros. That is to say the absolute value of one over n minus zero equals to the absolute value of one over n. And because of the fact that n is an natural number, then one over n must be a positive number. And we know that the, the absolute value of any positive number equals to the positive number itself. For example, the absolute value of the positive number 5 equals to 5. Therefore, the absolute value of the positive number 1 over n will be equal to the positive number 1 over n itself. So we can cancel the sign of the absolute value. And so the condition that must hold is that for every epsilon that is greater than zero, 
the mass exists, capital N, that belongs to the natural numbers. So for every uh, natural number N that is greater than capital N, we must get that the absolute value of 1 over N minus 0 is less than epsilon. So this is the condition that must hold. Okay. So that is to say, here we must get for that for any epsilon that is greater than zero, uh, there exists natural number uh, capital N, uh, and for every natural number N that is greater than capital N, we must get that uh, the inequality 1 over n is less uh, than epsilon. So, we have to prove that this inequality is true. 1 over n is less than epsilon. Okay, and it again. We have to prove that 1 over n is less than epsilon. So here we multiply this inequality by n and we will get that 1 is less than epsilon times n. We will divide this inequality by epsilon and we will get that 1 over epsilon is less than n or n is greater than 1 over epsilon. Okay? So In order that the condition will be true for every epsilon that is greater than zero, there must be capital N that belongs to the natural numbers, and for any natural number N that is greater than capital N, we must get that 1 over epsilon is less than n. So in order that this uh, inequality will be true, we will choose capital N that is greater than 1 over epsilon, and then for every n that is greater than capital N, and we I want to choose that capital N is greater than 1 over epsilon. Here, from this inequality, we can derive that N is greater than 1 over epsilon. N is greater than 1 over epsilon. That is to say, if we choose capital N that is greater than 1 over epsilon, we will get that the condition holds. Why? Because we will get that n is greater than 1 over epsilon. That is to say, we will get that for every epsilon that is greater than 0, there is this natural number capital N, in such a way that for every natural number n that is greater than capital N, we will get that n is greater than 1 over epsilon. Okay, so in order that the condition we all we must we must choose that capital N. We must choose capital N that is greater than one over epsilon, and then the condition will hold. Okay. So we have the right to choose n that is greater than natural number n that is greater than the natural number capital N. So this inequality is true according to our choice. So we will divide this inequality by capital by n and we will get that 1 is greater than capital N over n. Then we will divide this inequality by capital N and we'll get that 1 over capital N is greater than 1 over N. Okay? 
So actually we found out that 1 over n is smaller than 1 over capital N. Okay. This is to say when we choose n that is greater than capital N, we can get that 1 over n is smaller than 1 over capital N. And we have already found out that the absolute value of 1 over n minus the limit 0 is equal to the absolute value of 1 over n. And the absolute value of 1 over n equals to 1 over n. And we just right now found out that 1 over n is smaller than 1 over capital N. So we can write here that 1 over n is smaller than 1 over capital N. And we will focus on this expression 1 over capital N. If we have, uh, I will give you an example. If we have uh, the number 1 fifth, 1 over 5. So if we leave the numerator as it is, we have even the numerator 1. So if we leave the numerator as 1, and we we'll decrease the denominator of this number 1 fifth from 5 to 4, then the number itself will be the number that we we'll get here will be greater than the original number. That is to say, 1 over 4 is greater than 1 over 5. So from this example, we can conclude that whenever you leave the numerator as it is and you decrease the numerator from capital N to a smaller number, then the result will be a greater number than the original. So we choose capital N that is greater than 1 over epsilon or actually choose uh, 1 over epsilon that is smaller than capital N. That is to say here if we substitute the denominator capital N by a smaller number, that is to say by 1 over epsilon that is smaller than capital N, then the number that we will get here will be greater than the original number 1 over capital N. I repeat again, whenever you leave the numerator as it is and you decrease the denominator, then the result will be uh, a greater number than the original number. That is to say, when you decrease the denominator, the number itself will be greater than the original number. So if we decrease the denominator from capital N to 1 over epsilon, therefore the number itself, 1 over 1 over epsilon, will be greater than the original number, 1 over capital N. Okay? Therefore, 1 over 1 over epsilon is greater than 1 over capital N. And what is the value of 1 over 1 over epsilon? It is equal to epsilon. That is to say we actually found out that if we choose capital N that is greater than 1 over epsilon, so for every N that is greater than capital N, we we'll get that the condition holds. That is to say the absolute value of 1 over N minus the limit 0 will be less than epsilon and we actually, I repeat again, we actually proved that for any epsilon that is greater than zero there exists a natural number capital N and we choose capital N that is greater than one over epsilon and for every n that is 
greater than capital N, we will get that the absolute value of 1 over N minus 0 is less than epsilon. You can see here we found out that the absolute value of 1 over N minus 0 is less than epsilon. So, I repeat again, if you choose capital N that is greater than 1 over epsilon, then we get that the condition holds. That is to say, we actually proved that the limit of sequence a n equals to 1 over n when n tends to infinity equals to 0. I repeat again, if we choose for every epsilon that is uh, greater than 0, there exists capital N, and we, we choose capital N that is greater than 1 over epsilon, and then for every natural number N that is greater than capital N, we will get the absolute, that the absolute value of 1 over N minus the limit 0 is indeed less than epsilon. That is to say, the condition holds, and for that reason, we actually proved that the limit of sequence a n equals to 1 over n, and n tends to infinity equals to 0. Okay? So, we finished to talk about a finite limit. Here, because of the fact that the limit of sequence a n and n tends to infinity is equals to L, and L belongs to the real numbers. So until now we talked about finite limits, because R is a real number, okay? But we also have a sequences that have a limit in the broader sense, uh, so actually, if, so in the next topic we'll talk about a sequences that have a, an infinite limit. So, a sequence a n is said to tend to infinity, that is to say the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity will be equal to plus infinity. So, sequence a n has a limit in the broader sense and it is equal to plus infinity. Okay? So we can write down that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity is equal to plus infinity in this way. Or a second way to write down the same thing here or we write down a n with the, the right arrow that is equal to plus infinity. So those two expressions have the same meaning that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity equals to plus infinity. So only if the following condition holds, we will say that the limit of sequence a n in the broader sense when n tends to infinity equals to plus infinity. And the condition that must hold is as follows. For every real number k as large as we would like, there is a natural number capital N such that for every natural number N that is greater than capital N, 
we will get that a n is greater than k. Repeat again. The condition that must hold in order that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity will be equal to plus infinity is as follows. For every read number k as large as we would like, there must be a natural number capital N. So for every natural number N that is greater than capital N, we will get that An is greater than K. So what is the meaning of this condition? The meaning of this condition is that from the index and onwards we, we, we have actually infinite terms that are greater than k okay so eventually because of the fact that we have infinite terms that are larger than any fixed k and k could be as large as we want. That is the reason that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity in the modern sense, it is equal to plus infinity. I repeat again, until the index n, we have fixed terms that are not obeyed to this condition, that must hold, but because of the fact that from the index n onwards, that is to say from the index n until plus infinity, until the index plus infinity, we have infinite terms of sequence AN that are greater than K, and for that reason, the limit of sequence AN in the bounded sense when N tends to infinity will be equal to plus infinity. So symbolically, we can write down the condition uh, that must hold in order that the limit of sequence AN when N tends to infinity will be equal to plus infinity as follows. For every real number k, as large as we want, so k belongs to real numbers, then exists, this is the sign of exist, a capital N that belongs to the natural numbers. So for every uh, natural number, n for every uh, natural number n that is greater than capital N we will get that an is greater than k. I repeat again, because of the fact that until the index n we have fixed terms, so we will get maybe that fixed terms of sequence an are not obeyed to this condition, but because of the fact that from the index n onwards we have infinite terms of sequence an that obey to this condition, that is to say they are greater than K, for that reason, we can say that the limit of sequence AN in the broadest sense and n tends to infinity will be equal to plus infinity. Okay, so in the next step, I will present to you an example of a sequence that has a limit in the broadest sense. So, when n tends to infinity, the limit of the sequence in the broader sense will be equal to plus infinity. So, here we have the set of the natural numbers. Uh, and the set of the natural numbers can be represented by this formula that an equals to n. That is to say, when the index n equals to 1, then the first term 
of the set of the natural numbers, it is equals to 1, and the index n equals to 2, then a2, the second term of the set of the natural numbers equals to 2, and the index n equals to 3, then a3 equals to 3, etc., etc., when the index n of the set of the natural numbers is equal to 100, then the value of the 100 term, that is to say a100, equals to 100, and finally, when the index n is n, then the value of the n term is an. So it is very easy to see here that as n increases, the terms of the set of the natural numbers are getting bigger and bigger. So we can assume that the limit of this sequence, that is the set of the natural numbers, a n equals to n, when n tends to infinity, the limit in the broader sense of the set of the natural numbers will be equal to plus infinity, when n tends to infinity. Okay. So, uh, we will prove that the limit of the set of the natural numbers when n tends to infinity equals to plus infinity. So, we have to prove that the condition that must hold in the holds. So what is the condition that must hold here? The condition that must hold in, in order that the set of the limit of the set of the natural numbers when n tends to infinity will be equal to plus infinity is as follows. For every real number k as large as we would like, there exists a natural number capital N and for every uh, natural number n that is greater than capital N, we will get that a n is greater than k. That is to say, from the index n onwards, all the terms of sequence of the set of the natural numbers, that, and actually from the index n onwards, we have infinite terms of sequence a n that is equal to n, we have infinite terms of the set of the natural numbers that must be greater than k. Okay? So this condition must hold in order that the limit of the set of the natural numbers in the broader sense will be equal to plus infinity when n tends to infinity. Okay, so in order that this condition will hold, we will choose capital N that is equal to the integer value of the number k plus 1000 when it is rounded up. I will repeat again, we will choose capital N, that is equal to the integer value of k plus 1000 when it is rounded up. For example, if the number 5.5 5, 5 .5 is rounded up, it will be equal to 6. Repeat again, we choose capital N such it is equal to the integer value of k plus 1000 when it is rounded up. Okay, so for every n that is greater than capital N, we know that a n equals to n because this is the formula to present the terms of the natural numbers. So we know that a n equals to n, and we have already found out, we have already chosen capital N 
It is equal to the integer value of k plus 1000, and it is on the dark. So this inequality is true according to our choice. We choose capital N that is uh, equal to the integer value of k plus 1000 when it is rounded up. And we choose N that is greater than capital N. And we know that AN equals to N because this is the formula for the, to present the natural numbers. So this inequality is true. So from this inequality, we will derive that AN is greater than the integer value of K plus 1000 when it is rounded up. But if AN is greater than the integer value of K plus 1000 when it is rounded up, let alone that AN is greater than K. That is to say, if we choose capital N that is equal to the integer value of K plus 1000 when it is rounded up, we will get that the condition holds. Why? Because AN will be greater than K. That is to say, from the index N onwards, we have infinite terms of the sets of the natural numbers that will be greater than K. And for that reason, we will actually get that the limit of the set of the natural numbers in the broadest sense when n tends to infinity is equal to plus infinity. Okay. So in the next step we'll talk about the sequences that has a limit in the broader sense, and the limit is equal to minus infinity. So, similarly, we we'll say that the limit of sequence a n and n tends to infinity will be equal to minus infinity of sequence a n tends to minus infinity. That is the first way to write it down. And the second way to write down the same thing is a n with the right arrow equals to minus infinity. Those are the two ways to write down the same thing. The delimit of sequence a n and and then to and then to infinity, the limit in the bounded sense it is equal to minus infinity. So only if the following condition holds, then the limit of sequence again and n tends to infinity will be equal to minus infinity. So the condition that must hold is as follows. For every real number k as small as we would like, there is a natural number capital N such, as, such that for every natural number N that is greater than capital N, we will get that An is smaller than k. So that is the condition that must hold in order that the limit of sequence a n and n tends to infinity in the broadest sense will be equal to minus infinity. Now it is again for every, any real number k as small as we would like, there exists uh, natural number capital N. So for every natural number n that is greater than capital N, we will get that a n is smaller than k. Or in other words, from the index n. Onwards, we will have infinite terms of sequence AN that are smaller than K, and for that reason, the limit of sequence AN 
when n tends to infinity in the positive sense, will be equal to minus infinity. Why? Because we have infinite terms of sequence a n from the index n onwards that are smaller uh, than k, and k is a small, a small like. Okay? So, that is to say, infinite terms of sequence a n are eventually smaller than any fixed k, and for that reason, the limit of sequence a n in the broadest sense when n tends to infinity will be equal to minus infinity. So, symbolically, we, we write down the condition that must hold in order that the, sequence, the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity will be equal to minus infinity as follows. For every k that belongs to the real numbers, there exists, this is a sign of exist, uh, uh, capital N that belongs to the natural numbers, and for every and it belongs to the natural numbers, that is to say, for every natural number n that is written the capital N, we will get that an is smaller than k. Repeat again, according to this condition, until the index n, we have fixed terms of, C, uh, of sequence an it may not obey to this condition, but because of the fact that from the index n onwards we have infinite terms of sequence a n that obey to this condition, that is to say they are smaller than any fixed k, as small as we would like. For that reason, the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity in the broadest sense will be equal to minus infinity. Okay. So, in the next step, we'll talk about the arithmetic of limits.
in the next step we will talk about the arithmetic of limits. So if the limit of sequence an exists when n tends to infinity, and we also know that the limit of sequence Bn exists and then tends to infinity. So the limits of sequences An and Bn exist and n tends to infinity. Then the following equations will be true. According to equation number one, we get that the limit of sequence an plus bn when n tends to infinity will be equal to the limit of sequence an when n tends to infinity plus the limit of sequence bn when n tends to infinity. So I'll explain the meaning of equation number one. In the left side of equation number one, here we will add the terms of sequence an with terms of sequence bn correspondingly. In this way, we create a third sequence. Then we'll calculate the limit of the first sequence that we created and the result must be equal to the limit of sequence an when we will calculate it separately we'll calculate separately the limit of sequence bn we will add the two limits with each other and the final result must be equal to the limit of the third sequence that we created here when n tends to infinity Okay, and we have actually equation number two that is also true. According to equation number two, the limit of sequence an minus bn when n tends to infinity is equal to the limit of sequence an when n tends to infinity minus the limit of sequence bn when n tends to infinity. Repeat again. In the left side of equation number two, we have here we will subtract the terms of sequence bn from the terms of sequence an correspondingly. So in this way we created actually a third sequence. Then we will calculate the limit of the first sequence that we created and the result must be equal to what is written in the right side of equation number two. And what is written in the right side of equation number two is that here we will calculate the limit of sequence again separately. We will calculate the limit of sequence Bn separately, and then we subtract the limit of sequence Bn from the limit of sequence An, and the final result must be equal to the limit of the third sequence that we created in the left side of equation number two. And we also have equation number three that is also true, according to equation number three.
the limit of sequence C times AN when N tends to infinity equals to the limit equals to C times the limit of sequence AN when N tends to infinity. Here C belongs to the real numbers. C belongs to the real numbers. That is to say, so C could be any real number. So what is the meaning of equation number 3? In the left side of equation number 3, we have uh, sequence C times AN. So if we calculate the limit of sequence C times AN when n tends to infinity, then the result here must be equal to the limit of sequence AN when we will calculate it separately. And then we will multiply the result by C. And the final result here must be equal to the limit of sequence C times AN when n tends to infinity. And we have also equation number 4 that is true. According to equation number 4, the limit of sequence AN times BN and then tends to infinity equals to the limit of sequence AN and n tends to infinity times the limit of sequence Bn when n tends to infinity. We'll explain the meaning of equation number 4. According to equation, in the left side of equation number 4, we have here, we will actually multiply the terms of sequence An by the terms of sequence Bn correspondingly and then we will calculate the limit of in this way we actually created a third sequence in the next step we will calculate the limit of the new sequence that we created here and the result must be equal to what is written in the right side of equation number 4 and what is written in the right side of equation number 4 we have the limit we will calculate the limit of sequence AN and then tends to infinity separately. We calculate the limit of sequence BN separately. And then we multiply the two limits that we got by each other. And the final result must be equal to the limit of the first sequence that we created in the left side of equation number four. And we also have equation number five that is true. According to equation number five, the limit of sequence AN over BN when N tends to infinity equals to the limit of sequence AN when N tends to infinity over the limit of sequence BN when N tends to infinity provided that the limit of sequence Bn when n tends to infinity must not equal to zero. Why? Because it is not allowable to divide anything by zero. And if the limit of sequence Bn when n tends to infinity will be equal to zero, here we will divide uh, the denominator of this expression by zero. That is the reason that the limit of sequence Bn when n tends to infinity must not equal to zero. And finally, we have equation number six that is also true. According to equation number six, the limit of sequence 
an to the power of p when n tends to infinity must be equal to the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity and we will multiply the result to the power of p. I will explain the meaning of equation number 6. We're going into equation number 6. In the left side of equation number 6, we have uh, we calculate the limit of sequence a n to the power of p when n tends to infinity, and the result must be equal to the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity, when we will calculate it separately, and then we will raise the result to the power of p, and the final result here must be equal to the limit of sequence a n to the power of p when n tends to infinity. So in the next step, I will summarize the lecture. So in this lecture we talked about the limit of a sequence. A sequence is a set of terms. A sequence could be finite, like this sequence that consists of, of only three terms. And it also could be infinite, like the sequence, like the set of the natural numbers that consists of infinite terms. So we write down that the limit of sequence a n and n tends to infinity equals to l. l belongs to the real numbers. n is the index of the theorem, and a is the value of the theorem that its index is n. So here we write down that the limit of sequence a n and n tends to infinity equals to l. So, if a sequence has a limit, it will have only one limit. And then we will say that the sequence AN converges, or sequence AN is a convergent sequence. If the limit of sequence VN doesn't ex exist, then, or if a sequence VN has one, then more, uh, more than one limit, then we say that sequence Bn is a divergent sequence. Okay. So actually, what is the limit of a sequence? The limit of a sequence is the value that the terms of a sequence tend to. Okay. This is the way to write down that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity equals to the real number n, l. So here we are talking about finite limits. So what is the definition of a limit of a sequence? So as I mentioned before, we write down that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity equals to the real number l. A second way to write down the same thing in a n with the right arrow equals to the limit l. So those two expressions have the same meaning. The limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity equals to l. So the condition that must hold in order that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity will be equal to l is as follows. For every uh, real number epsilon that is greater than zero, that is to say, for every epsilon that is a positive number, there exists uh, the natural number capital M. 
So for every natural number n that is greater than capital N, you get that the absolute value of a n minus the limit L is less than epsilon. Okay? So, uh, the meaning of this condition is that the terms of sequence a n are close to the limit L up to epsilon. So graphically, we can write down the condition here as is drawn here. Here L is the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity. So the environment, the environment of L starts from the point L minus epsilon and the point L minus epsilon itself is not included in the environment of L and at, at point L plus epsilon and the point L plus epsilon is not included in the environment of L. So this is the environment of L. Okay, and until the index N we have fixed terms of sequence a n that may not obey to this condition, but because of the fact that from the index n onwards, that is to say from the index n until the index plus infinity, we have infinite terms of sequence a n that obey to this rule. That is to say, infinite terms of sequence a n are uh, close to the limit l up to epsilon. So in order that uh, sequence a n will have a limit l when n tends to infinity, infinite terms of sequence a n must be in the environment inside the environment of l. Or in other words, in other words, we can say that infinite terms of sequence a n must be, be between those two markets. Okay. So symbolically, we write down the condition that must hold in order that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity will be equal to L as follows. For every epsilon that belongs to the real numbers and it is and that is greater than zero, there exists capital N that belongs to the natural numbers. So for every natural number n that is greater than capital N, we get that the absolute value of a n minus the limit n is less than epsilon. Okay. Then I give you an example of a sequence that its limit is zero when n tends to infinity. Here the sequence is a n equals to one over n. When the index n equals to one, then the first term of sequence a n is one over one. When the index n equals to two, then a two equals to one over two. When the index n equals to three, then a three equals to one over three. When the index n equals to one hundred, then a one hundred is equals to one over one hundred. So you can see here that as the index n increases, the terms of the sequence are getting closer and closer to zero. Okay, so we can assume that the limit of sequence a n equals to one over n, and n equals to when n tends to infinity is equals to zero. So we have to prove that the following condition holds in order that the limit of sequence a n that is equal to one over n will be equal to zero. The condition that must hold is as follows: for every epsilon that is greater than zero, we will have uh, capital there exists capital N that belongs to the natural numbers. So for a capital N that is big enough, we get that for every natural number n that is greater than capital N, we get that the absolute value of 1 over n minus 0 is less than epsilon. So, so this condition must hold in order that the limit, that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity will be equal to 0. Okay? But we know that 
the absolute value of 1 over n minus 0 equals to the absolute value of 1 over n. Why? Because when you subtract 0, you change nothing. And therefore, we can cancel out 0. And because of the fact that n is a natural number, in 1 over any natural number, is a, it is a positive number. And we know that the absolute value of a positive number equals to the positive number itself. For example, the absolute value of 5 is 5. Therefore, the absolute value of the positive number 1 over n equals to 1 over n. So we can cancel out the sign of the absolute value. And we have to prove that the absolute value of 1 over n minus the limit 0 is less than epsilon. Or, in other words, we have to prove that 1 over n is smaller than epsilon. Okay, so in order to prove that 1 over n is smaller than epsilon, or in order to prove that this inequality is true, so here we have uh, inequality, the inequality that 1 over n is less than epsilon. Here we, here we multiply the inequality by n and we get that 1 is smaller than epsilon times n. We divide this inequality by epsilon and we get that 1 over epsilon is smaller than n. Or n is greater than 1 over epsilon. So that is actually the inequality that must be true in order that the condition will hold. Okay? That is to say for every epsilon that is greater than zero, there must be one to one over capital N. So for every N that is greater than capital N, we will get that N is greater than one over epsilon. So in order that this inequality will be true and the condition will hold, we will choose capital N that is greater than one over epsilon. And then, for every n that is greater than capital N, and we choose capital N that is greater than 1 over epsilon, so this inequality is true. This inequality, this inequality is true according to our choice. We choose from the beginning that n is greater than capital N, and we choose capital N that is greater than 1 over epsilon. So from this inequality, we will derive that n is greater then 1 over epsilon. That is to say, if you choose capital N uh, that is greater than 1 over epsilon, then we get that N is greater than 1 over epsilon. That is to say, we get that this inequality is true, and therefore the condition holds. So, we, if we choose N that is greater than capital N, so, this inequality is true according to our choice, according to our selection. So, we divide this true inequality by n and we get that 1 is greater than ca uh, capital N over n. We divide this inequality by capital N and we get that 1 over capital N is greater than 1 over n. Okay, and we already found out that, so this inequality is true because this inequality is true. Okay, and we already found out that the absolute value of 1 over n minus 0 equals to the absolute value of 1 over n, and the absolute value of 1 over n equals to 1 over n. And we, are, we just right now found out that 1 over n is smaller than 1 over capital N, so we can copy the inequality here, this inequality that is true here, and here we will focus on the expression 1 over capital N. And, for example, if we have uh, a number, and whenever we will decrease the denominator of this number, and we will leave the numerator as it is, then the result that we get will be greater than, than the original number. So, if we decrease the denominator of capital N from capital N to 1 over epsilon. Here, we know that 
1 over epsilon is smaller than capital N, so here we decrease the denominator, therefore the number itself that we will get will be greater than the original number 1 over capital N. That is to say, 1 over 1 over epsilon will be greater than the original number that is 1 over capital N. Why? Because here, when we decrease the denominator 5 to, the, to 4, we got that the number itself that we got here, 1 over 4, is greater than 1 over 5. Therefore, when we decrease the denominator capital N from capital N to 1 over epsilon, we get that 1 over 1 over epsilon is greater than 1 over capital N. And what is the value of 1 over 1 over epsilon? It is equal to epsilon. That is to say, we found out that the absolute value of 1 over n minus 0 is less than epsilon. So in conclusion, we found out that for every epsilon that is greater than 0, if we choose capital N that is greater than 1 over epsilon, then for every n, for every not one number n that is greater than capital N, we will get that uh, the absolute value of 1 over n minus 0 is less than epsilon. That is to say, if we choose capital N that is greater than 1 over epsilon, then the condition holds. And for that reason, because of the fact that the condition holds, we can conclude from it that the limit of sequence an that is equal to 1 over n when n tends to infinity must be equal to 0. So until now we talked about a finite limit. Why? Right? Because we talked about the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity and it is equal to L. But we know that L uh, belongs to the real numbers. So until now we talked about finite limits. So then we, talk, we talked about limits and sequences that have infinite limits. So here, the limit of sequence a n when n tends to an infinity. So sequence a n f a limit in the broadest sense, and the limit will be equal to plus infinity. We can write down the same thing. The, the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity equals to plus infinity. So those are the two ways to write down the same thing. The, the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity equals to plus infinity. The condition that must hold in order that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity will be equal to plus infinity is as follows. For every real number k as large as we would like, there exists capital N that belongs to the natural numbers. So for every natural number n that is greater than capital N, we will get that a n is greater than k. Okay? So, in other words, from the index a n onwards, we have infinite terms of sequence a n that are greater than k, and for that reason, the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity in the broadest sense is equal to plus infinity. So symbolically, we can write down the term that must hold as follows. For every k as large as we would like, and k belongs to, to the real number, so for every real number k as large as we would like, there exists capital N that belongs to the natural numbers, and for every natural number n that is greater than capital N, we will get that an is greater than k. Again, from the index n onwards, we have infinite terms, and therefore we have infinite terms of sequence a n that are greater than k, and therefore the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity in the broadest sense will be equal to plus infinity. Okay? Then I presented to you an example for, of the set of the natural numbers, and the limit of the set of the natural numbers when n tends to infinity we have to prove that it equals to plus infinity. The set of the natural numbers can be represented by the formula a n equals to n. And the index n equals to 1, the, the value of the term, the first term, is 1. And the index n 
equals to 2, then the middle of the second term equals to 2, and the index n equals to 3, then the third term equals to 3. And the index n equals to 100, then a100 equals to 100. Okay, you can see here that when the index n increases, the terms of the set of the natural numbers also increases. So we can assume that the limit of the sequence of the set of the natural numbers when n tends to infinity will be equal to plus infinity. So the condition that must hold in order the limit of the, the limit of the set of the natural numbers will be, will be equal to plus infinity is as follows. For every real number k as large as we would like, there exists natural number capital N. So for every natural number n that is greater than capital N, we will get that An is greater than k. This is to say we will have in three terms of sequence an that are greater than k. And for that reason, the limit of sequence an in the bullet sense will be equal to plus infinity. Okay? So, we have the right to choose uh, the capital N. So, in order that this condition will hold, we'll choose capital N that is equal to the integer value of k plus 1000 when it is rounded up. And then we will get that for every n that is greater than capital N, and we know that an equals to n, that is the formula to represent the terms of the natural numbers. So for every n that is greater than capital N, we, and we want to choose capital N that is equal to the integer value of k plus 1000 when it is rounded up. For example, if uh, the number 5.5 .5 is rounded up, it is, will be equal to 6. So this inequality is true according to our choice. We choose n that is greater than capital N, when, when we already choose capital N that is equal to the integer value of k plus 1000 when it is rounded up. So this inequality is true. From this inequality we can derive that a n is greater than the integer value of k plus 1000 when it is rounded up. But if a n is greater than the integer value of k plus 1000 when it is rounded up, let alone that a n is greater than k. So actually we found out that if we choose uh, capital N that is equal to the integer value of k plus 1000 when it is rounded up, then the condition will hold. Why? Because a n is greater than k. And for that reason, we actually succeeded to prove that the limit of the set of the natural numbers when n tends to infinity, the limit of the, in the bounded sense of the set of the natural numbers will be equal to plus infinity. Okay, then I presented to you, uh, we talked about uh, sequences that have a limit in the bounded sense and their limit is minus infinity. So we can say that sequence an will have the limit of minus infinity or 10 to minus infinity when n tends to infinity. Or we can write down the same thing like this, like here, an with the right arrow that is equal to minus infinity. Only if the following condition holds, we can I know that the limit of sequence a n when n tends to infinity in the bounded sense will be equal to one of infinity. And the condition that must hold is as follows. For every real number k as small as we would like, there exists capital n that belongs to the natural numbers, and for every natural number n that is greater than capital n, we get that a n is smaller than k. That is to say, from the index n onwards, we have infinite terms of sequence a n that are smaller than k, and k is a very small number, as small as we would like, and because of the fact that we have infinite terms of sequence a n that are smaller than k, for that reason we can say that the limit of sequence a n in the bounded sense when n tends to infinity will be equal to minus infinity. So symbolically you can write down the condition that must hold as follows. 
for every k as small as you would like, or for every real number k as small as you would like, there exists capital N that belongs to the natural numbers. For, so for every natural number n that is greater than capital N, we will get that an is smaller than k. I repeat again, because of the fact that until the index n, we have, in, uh, we have uh, fixed terms, or fixed indexes, or fixed terms that may not obey to this condition, but because of the fact that from the index n onwards, we have infinite terms that obey to this condition, that is to say, that is to say infinite terms of sequence an, an are smaller than any uh, small number k. For that reason, you can say that the limit of sequence an in the broader sense and n tends to infinity will be equal to minus infinity. Okay, then we talk about the arithmetic of limits. So if we know that the limit of sequence an when n tends to infinity exists, and the limit of sequence vn when n tends to infinity is also exists, so the limit of sequences an and vn exist as n to infinity, as n tends to infinity, then the following equation will be true. The limit of sequence an plus vn and n tends to infinity equals to the limit of sequence an and n tends to infinity plus the limit of sequence vn when n tends to infinity. The limit of sequence an minus vn and n tends to infinity equals to the limit of sequence an when n tends to infinity minus the limit of sequence vn when n tends to infinity. And the question number three that is also true, the limit of uh, c times an of sequence c times an when n tends to infinity equals to c times the limit of sequence an when n tends to infinity. c belongs to the real numbers, that is to say, c could be any real number. And the question number four, that is also true, the limit of sequence an times vn when n tends to infinity equals to the limit of sequence an when n tends to infinity times the limit of sequence vn when n tends to infinity. And we have a question number five that is also true. The limit of sequence an over bn when n tends to infinity equals to the limit of sequence an when n tends to infinity over the limit of sequence vn when n tends to infinity. Because of the fact that the limit of sequence bn when n tends to infinity is the, in the denominator of this expression, therefore it must not be equal to zero because it is not allowed to divide anything by zero. And finally we have a question number six that the limit of sequence an to the power of p when n tends to infinity equals to the limit of sequence an when n tends to infinity. And we will multiply the result to the power of p. And that result, that the, the final result, must be equal to the limit of sequence an to the power of p when n tends to infinity. Okay, thank you very much.